Welcome to Altered Life. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with the Altered YJ project. Now, you can probably tell by what's in front of me and by the title of the video what we're going to be doing. So we are going to be installing Motobilt's rear competition cut corner armor or corner guards. The product number for this on Motobilt's website is MB1049 if you're interested. They also have a non competition cut option that will allow you to cut it out yourself. But if you've been following along with my project, you know I already have some Motobilt products installed, one of them being the rear stretch kit. And with that, it bumps your axle back six inches and I plan on running a 40 inch tire. So I'm gonna need the competition cut to clear. If you haven't been following along with my build and are curious with everything I've done to it, Head over to our channel and check out the Altered YJ Project playlist and you can follow along to catch up to where we're at here. When you order your corner armor, it's going to come with each side and the uh, necessary hardware for it. And then if you also get the blown tailgate armor, you will have this, the armor piece itself, and the supplied hardware as well. As you may have noticed, Motobilt has four and a half inch circle cuts in the rear of their armor to accommodate for a flush mounted taillight. Now, a couple years ago, I did a four and a half inch circle cut into my body so I could do the flush mount taillight. So I'm already there, except that my holes won't line up to the holes in the armor but at least I already have the lights and we can go from there. So since my project is already stripped down this far, it's gonna be probably a bit different from those of you that are installing this on a ready to go running driving Jeep. But some of the first things you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to remove your fuel filler because the comp cut is going to cut right through that space and you're gonna to have to relocate that. Now me, I'm doing a fuel cell and I'm mounting my fuel cell up into the body here. With the stretch kit, I'm getting rid of my fuel tank underneath, so I won't have to worry about where my filler is, but you guys are gonna have to figure that out. Uh, next, you're gonna have to get rid of your inner wheel well. So I already got rid of my plastic inner fender liner, and over on this side, it is cleared out as well. The next thing is you're going to have to remove your tail lights and we're going to have to remove our tail gate. So for those of you that have factory tail lights, you'll just unscrew them. If you already have circle tail lights, I can just literally push them into the body because it, all it is is retained by a grommet. So I'm going to go ahead and get my tailgate removed and get my tail lights removed as well. Now that the taillights are removed, we're going to remove the tailgate. And this is, and the bolts for the tailgate hinges are a T40. I'm gonna do the interior bolts first. So my idea behind the, doing the interior ones first is now, I can close the gate and that's going to help retain it for me so when I loosen these two I don't drop the whole gate since I'm by myself. So that should be it. So now I can unlock the gate and the gate will come right off. So I should have started the video off by saying that I'm not a professional, I've never done this before, and I really don't know what I'm doing. And this video is kind of a, a guideline to just show anybody that's interested or maybe tackling this project on their own to get an idea of what's involved. And if I mess up or find something that's helpful, I'm gonna do my best to show it. Some of the tools that are gonna assist you, if you have them, 
are going to be some clamps. So I have these C clamp vice grips. So they're going to be super helpful as well as a couple regular C clamps as well. Now, I think I'm going to start with the passenger side just because we do have the hinge mounts or the hinge bolts here and the corner armor is cut for these hinge bolts. So my plan is I'm hoping to get the armor somewhat in place and put the hinge bolts in to help hold it there while I can clamp everything else in place to get it where it should be. Trying to get a clamp uh, way too well. Do you have an extra person or set of hands? That'd be probably super helpful too. Just want to try to get this bolt started. How about? We just want to get it clamped up roughly in place. Once we get some more clamps on it, we can make fine adjustments to get it where it needs to be. Now, one thing I didn't mention was if you're trying to protect the paint underneath the armor, you might want to put some tape, some painter's tape or masking tape or something around the paint so when you're sliding the steel up and down on it, you're not scratching the paint. Raw 3 16 steel and the sharp edges of that steel will, uh, could scratch the paint. Now that we have this roughly clamped in place, you guys can start to see where we're gonna be cutting out of the body. That's how much we're gonna be removing. Also, when I did my flush metal taillights, you can see that my hole isn't where the new hole's gonna be, but that won't matter because the, uh, the grommet for the taillight will mount to the armor itself and not the body, so it being oblonged out of here isn't going to make a difference. So all I'm doing for these hinge bolts is I'm just taking the factory bolt and a washer eye laying around and I'm getting them started in the hole. So what this is going to do is this is going to help keep at least this back section where it needs to be, and then we can adjust the front. So before I cinch it down, there's kind of the edge of the body where it tapers down. I'm mean, gonna use that as a reference point to keep that, this top edge of the armor at level with that. And then also the inside of the gate, I'm gonna to try to keep the gap the same between the gate edge, the inside of the gate edge, and the edge of the corner armor. So So I have those two bolts and the one there. And it's pushing it nice and tight against the body. And you can see it's a nice even gap all the way down, right on that edge. And then kind of up close here too, you can see where the body tapers down and flattens out. It comes flat right across to the top of the armor there. Here's our two clamps up there currently holding the armor right along that same edge. And then up front here, I opened up the door and clamped it right to the inside there. Right there. And then I wanna get a couple more clamps on there just so th I know things won't move. And I don't, I only have two of these clamps, so I'm gonna need to use C clamps, but the C clamps won't reach into this edge so what we're going to do is take a two by four lay it there that way we can pinch all that all right so there's our edges there you can see it's a little bit of a gap here 
but that's where a bolt's gonna be and then a bolt is gonna be right here so that's gonna really help pull pull that in but we're pretty tight along that edge and then through all the clamps you can see we're very tight all the way across the top and then our our edge flattens out and we're just slightly see if I can get it we're just slightly below that so maybe that needs to come up just a hair it might need to come up just a hair and then at our door at our door we have a little bit of a gap from the edge coming down kind of come past the edge of the lower corner and then as it tapers up it comes around and gives us our edge i've double checked my edges made sure all my clamps are tight and everything looks good to me now from what i'm seeing with this it is very important to get this as tight to the body as you can before you mark your lines just because you know metal does have a little bit of give and play in it so if it's loose on one end and you mark a hole then uh when you start tightening up or if you drill a hole it may be misaligned and then you're gonna have some issues down the road so as you can see i have three bolts here one two three four and five clamps all the way across this holding it as tight as i possibly can get it and like i said everything looks good the lines all look good so what I'm going to do now is I have just a paint marker. I like the bright colors. You can use a Sharpie too, but my paint's kind of dark and it's hard to see the Sharpie lines. I want something clear and concise that I can see while I'm cutting. That way I don't wander with whatever I'm cutting with. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the circle because mine's already cut so that's, that's going to be a challenge for me so i'm going to mark the circle and then i'm going to trace the entire edge along and then i'm just going to mark every hole as well all right Before I undo the clamps to pull the armor, I'm going to take a center punch and I'm going to center punch each of the holes just to give me that little extra security to help keep that drill bit as center as possible when I start drilling. I have every hole center punched, all lines marked. Now I can start taking the clamps off and getting the armor removed to see what we have. All of our new mounting hole locations and then our cut line. Well, now that we have our line marked and our holes marked, time to cut. So the tools that we're going to need to cut or the tools that I have available is I have a little air cutoff wheel, a little air body saw, regular electric cutoff wheel, and then a good old sawzall with a Diablo metal blade. These metal blades are awesome. If you haven't used them, I highly recommend them. Can't say one tool is better than the other yet. I just foresee me having to use multiple tools. Now, if you only have one of these, I'm sure it would work, but I guess we'll find out. And then, uh, obviously, for the holes we'll need drill bits and 
I'm gonna hope that my hole saw will work, but I don't know if I'll be able to get a center for the hole saw, so we'll see. I'm going to do the entire passenger side, and then I'm gonna move on to the driver's side, just in case I mess up something over here, I can correct it when I get over there. This line doesn't need to be absolutely perfect cut because the armor will cover this edge. So you want to cut on the inside of this line. That way you don't have any of the body protruding below the edge of the armor. There are some internal supports in here. That once we get to that, we may have to address it. So the only way to find out is to do it. So inside the inside the wheel well here, here's this internal support before it gets back to that area. And we're also going to have to cut out this boxed in portion of the body in the back. Here we go. I have the whole side all the way down to the very edge cut. I didn't cut anything through the box in area or this internal bracket of sorts. In my situation, for me to get this lower cut and get the box area inside cut out, I'm going to I'm going to lift the body again. That way I just have a little bit more room and I don't nick anything on my frame. can't lift your body or don't want to go through the hassle of doing this you don't have to just uh just be careful with coming in here and cutting or hitting the frame and again it's not really that big of a deal you can just paint it and be fine so i'm just doing this just to make it easier in my life because the way my project's set up right now This is where our Sawzall will come in. We'll be able to go all the way through and cut straight down through the whole box section. Sorry, in that last clip, I didn't realize that my body was blocking the view of the camera. So I apologize for that, but Here's the cut. You can see all the sand that came out of my body. And if you saw one of my throwback videos with the YJ, when I swamped it in the creek, yeah, that's all the sand still trapped in the body from that. But a look on the inside. Here you can see the cut through the boxed in section. So that's where that cut through. get in there there we go so straight through there but now we have to contend with this guy so it's spot welded along the inside and along the top so looking at this I, th I think the best way to get the spot welds from in here is I'm gonna take my saws all I'm gonna try to just come down the line It's only the spot welds that are along top, and I think it's only like two of them. So if we keep moving this back and forth, we might be able to break it. That's right. That's 
what I thought. Now the edge is a little rough, so I'm probably gonna come back with just a flap wheel and just clean the edge, just that way there's no sharp pokies I'm gonna cut myself on. So I'll do that, and then my, as you can see here, my fender top kind of gave out, so I might tack that back in place for the time being. I think I'm gonna order the Motobilt high clearance fender tops, so it replaces this whole piece and it brings it up to here. I just haven't ordered them yet. So I'll probably do that soon. Step over here. We can see a comparison to the driver's side that's not cut and that nice comp cut there. So this is all the hardware I laid out that Motobelt provides. These two plates were in the bag also, but I'm not sure where they go. So I gotta figure that out. Our nut certs for the, for the holes that need nut certed, and then our nuts and washers for the holes that we can get to from the backside. And then there is 12 countersunk Allen head bolts that go on each one. And then for the drill bits, I'm gonna drill a smaller hole with the pilot bit, and then I'm gonna come through and drill the bigger hole for the bolts. And then we're gonna need to drill an even larger hole for these nut certs. I think we'll need to drill a half inch hole for these, but I'm not sure yet, we'll figure that out. So now, we're bumping up to our 3 8 drill bit. And we're gonna drill all the holes. Well, there's only one more hole to drill on the passenger side here, and that's our four and a half inch hole for our taillight. And I'm gonna try my best to get this to cut evenly. Jesus. If you already have a hole cut, be careful, because these teeth are wanting to grab that edge and just yank it, so. Ugh. All right, well. I don't think the hole saw is going to work for my my situation because it keeps grabbing that. And... Oof. Well. Well, that got butchered a good bit there. Again, the corner arm was gonna cover it, so I'm not as worried, and plus I still have to send my Jeep out. I'm gonna get some body work done and get it all repainted, so I'm not worried about it, but if you guys are doing this and care about your paint, be very careful. All holes are drilled, everything's cut. We're going to take the corner armor, and I'm going to get it mocked back up and start test fitting to see if I have to trim any more out of the hole or if I have to trim any more off the side here. Then it's time to do the driver's side. But what a difference. Get you a wife that makes you a sandwich and brings it down to the garage for you. I love you, Lauren. Mm. All right, lunch break is over. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna show you guys pretty much just how everything looks. Most of my holes line up pretty good all the way around. So I just have a couple clamps holding it in place. And then we'll give a look underneath here. So 
There's that edge that I just threw a couple tacks on to hold that fender top in place. Comes all the way in. There you can see how my old hole was. Bunch of rusty, dirty stuff. So yeah, what we're gonna do is get the ones that use the, the nut and the washer. And we're gonna put all those in, but we're not gonna do the nut certain ones yet. The Allen head is a 3 16 Allen, and the nut that goes on the back is a half inch nut. That's all but the nut cert ones. Pull the clampies off here. See how she looks. These two for sure are two that get nut certed because they're behind this panel here. But after those two, I could get, I got that one, which is back there. So that very bottom one is back here. And then all the way across the top, here's the inside, all the way in. <coughs> And then coming around the back, have the top one here, this one here, which is on the inside, gives you access just to bolt it once after you cut it. Then our two hinge bolts that are already in. And then here is our other one that needs not inserted. And that's inside this boxed in area of the body. So those are your nut cert ones. And the passenger side's done, and then I gotta go do all, the whole same process the driver's side. Yeah, let's go. I'm unstoppable, do the impossible. I'm irresponsible. Well, the driver's side is a bit more of a pain in the butt than the passenger. Although, I think it's just my Jeep, because I know in a past life, my Jeep was hit in the rear here, because there's a lot of Bondo in this rear corner. You can see I have a bit more of a gap just around the corner. So I think that's just because it was in an accident and I had to use a lot more clamps to get this set up in place, but it's pretty close. The other challenging thing is that side had the hinge bolts to help hold that up where this doesn't. So I used a clamp through the, the filler port to help get that tight. So I'm gonna double check a few things and then it's gonna be the whole same process as that. I'll get back with you guys once the driver's side's all wrapped up. My Jeep was definitely in an accident in the rear. Or this whole side is like Bondo. You can really tell right here how they had, there's three different layers of metal plus a layer of Bondo out there. So yeah, I would be willing to bet corner guard on this side was not fitting properly. It's probably because my body is not straight. So I'm gonna take this back off and I'll show you the holes that need nut inserted and I'll show you the process of putting the nut inserts in. The bottom one on each side and then these top front two on each side and then one of those two. I'm not sure, I'm, both of those I could get a nut on the back but I'm running out of hardware so I gotta check where I gotta see what's going on, but 
for now, these two and this bottom back one. But what needs to happen first is we have to drill them out with a half inch drill bit. It's looking like the half inch is just a hair too small. So it's probably the next size up, but I don't have the next size up. So I just took the half inch and kind of wallowed it out until the nuts are just fit in there. Then put it in the body and bring the handles together. And these nut certs are not easy. Dang. So yeah, these nut certs are a little, uh, a little tough. My handles on my tool are short, so I don't get a lot of leverage. But that's the process. Uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with me doing it all. If you want to see a more detailed installation of how I do my nut certs, if you go back to our channel, some of our past videos... We did a lot of nut certs in Lawrence JL, so if you're interested in that, head to our channel and watch those videos. I'm going to knock these out. There we go. Both driver and passenger side corner armor are on. And they look good. So I figured out where my confusion was with the hardware. Turns out the driver side actually has... 13 bolts where the passenger side has 12 there was a bolt missing in the supplied hardware so that's what uh that's what confused me a little bit there and what i did was since this side fit better i just left it the front one here without until i get another bolt for that but all the the supplied hardware is in including the nut certs on both sides I figured out what these two plates are for. So it took me a minute, but I never said I was smart. I figured it out. So they are spacers for the door because obviously when you put your corner armor on, it spaces out your hinge 3 16 of an inch because this is 3 16, 3 16 inch steel. So what these will do is they'll go under the hinges on the door side and space the hinge out that way that way they, the hinge stays even so we'll do that real quick and we'll get the door back on get the tailgate on there we go alright you can get your tailgate latched so these plates are kind of directional as you can see the side here is fatter and the side here is skinnier the fatter side goes towards the hinge so towards the outside wait Wow. All right, our final step is getting our taillights installed. As you can see, I got the driver's side one on, but I just want to talk about, if you haven't ever installed flush-mounted taillights, it's very simple. You have your grommet, and that just kind of snaps into the hole. There's an internal groove, and it'll pop right around the edge, just like that. And you take your taillight, and it's a little tight. You just got to start on one end and work your way around. Use your hand on the back to try to keep the grommet from pushing through as you kind of knock the tail light into place. So you can see right there the grommet's a little. Popped right in place. There's our tail lights. Then I'll be back down in the morning 
to give you guys an overview of how everything looks now that it's all together. So I will see you guys in the morning. Good night. have it right there is the full install of these moto built rear corner armor if you're going to tackle this project and have a helper or a second set of hands i would highly recommend that it's a little hard to do it by yourself but if you are going to do it by yourself just make sure you have a lot of clamps to hold things in place while you would try to adjust to get it right before you mark your lines a few things that i think i'm going to address is this boxed in section how I cut it at the same angle, I think I'm gonna kinda of cut it back a little bit more so it's less protruding where the um, tire's gonna be, just to prevent anything from rubbing. And then I'm gonna take probably a piece of steel and cap that, that way it just cleans that up a little bit and doesn't allow junk and mud and dirt and sand to get in there. Then one last look here of the hinge spacers see them fully on so it gives and makes our hinge fully parallel without any play and the holes do have that little bit of adjustments to get your gate to fit properly as it should well with that that's the end of this install and the end of this video I want to thank you all for watching hopefully this was good information but if you do have any other questions or any other questions about this project in total, just head down to the comments, leave me a comment, and I'll do my best to get back to you. I'm going to install the Motobilt below the tailgate armor in the next video. So if you want to see that, stay tuned. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and share it to your buddies that may be installing some of the armor themselves. If you want to see any of the products that I used on this build, such as the rear stretch kit for the Jeep YJ, the corner armor, the coming up below the tailgate armor, my front full width conversion kit, all that can be found at motobuilt.com. So head on over there. If you have any questions on part numbers or anything like that, just reach out, leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer. Or if you have any questions about the Motobuilt products in general, give them a call and they'll be happy to answer all your questions. Until then, We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching The Altered Life. Have a good day.